Welcome to Cut the Bull, an insightful podcast which addresses the news of the day and the cultural issues plaguing our society, bringing logic and context to these topics and discussing solutions too real for mainstream pundits. Now, here are your hosts, Charles Love and Wilfred Riley. Hello and welcome to Cut the Bull. I am Charles Love alongside my co-host Wilfred Riley. We have our resident comedian back, Lou Perez. And joining us this week is Barrington Martin II, radio host in Atlanta and all around uh, trouble starter. Barrington, welcome to the show. <laughs> Glad to be here. It's always a wonderful so time. This is going to be an guys. interesting uh, show because it's more like just riffing about things that happen. But the catalyst was uh, a Twitter fight that's not really a fight that Barrington and I got in. Uh, because he was tweeting about something and I had some rare free time and that particular thing was Seth, right? So it was Seth Rogen and somebody attacking Seth Rogen because he had previously uh, posted about how happy he was and how one life is so much better when you don't have kids and a wife and you have to deal with all that nonsense and life is great. And this person was replying to him and saying, you don't know how wonderful it is to have kids and all this stuff. So Barrington had a totally normal tweet saying, well, it's okay what you believe, but let that man be happy without a family if you want. Why are you attacking him? And so I just re reply, you know, I'm always drive by because I'm busy. I just said, ah, I halfway agree with you. And then there was, I don't know if Barrington can say if he remembers. I don't remember if there was another topic, but there was another tweet. And I said the same thing to that. And he was like, well, why? And I didn't tweet the response because I didn't want to, but I think I just told him. Yeah. Uh, did I call you? I either called him or I, I DM'd him and I said, it's he's right that both of them have the right to what they believe, but a lot of Twitter is reactionary. So that person, I don't know who that was, was reacting to Seth because Seth's tone in his I'm happy wasn't just I'm happy. It was I'm happy and I'm better than you and let me stick my thumb in your eye, which made people <laughs> want to reply to them when it, it kind of led to us attacking the, the response of people on Twitter because my thing was, why can't Seth just be happy and shut the fuck up? I agree. <laughs> so that's how we start talking. This everybody need. So we got into Twitter, like how much you should share and what people do and what's what are they using it for and that kind of thing. So since you're the guest, Barrington, tell you can um, give your side of that exchange and what you think um, I was right or wrong about in the assessment of the, the that. Topic. Okay, so first you you weren't wrong at all. I understood your position. And I think that we've reached a point in social media where everybody wants to be validated. Everybody wants to be validated to the point to where that they think that their personal lives, in my opinion, is something that everyone should either do or they're they, they think that they're doing something for the greater good. So for example, so Seth Rogan says that um he smokes weed. And he lays in the bed all day and his life is great. And if you saw the thread, a lot of people were saying, well, that's a no one, that's a nobody life. Like you're a loser. Like you should want to aspire to have children and have a legacy and all those things. And I'm like, these are the same people who are on the conservative side who speak about freedom and liberty and all of those things, but totally did not want this man to have the freedom to live his life the way that he wanted to live his life. And so I think that when you basically combine that with the aspect of everybody's looking to be validated in some form or fashion. Validation is almost um, like crack to people. I know they get a dopamine release when they see the likes. I know they get a dopamine release when they see the retweets. I know they get a dopamine release when people co-sign their lifestyle. And I think that it just goes into a whirlwind of all of this stuff that we see on social media, especially on Twitter, where Twitter is, um, in my opinion, a one big bubble of echo chamber where people think that their bubble is bigger than what it really is. Mm -hmm. um, who do I go to first? Will. Um, <laughs> higher than Twitter yet. When I'm not at Twitter yet, but just specific to what he's saying, obviously you're going to agree with it. There's nothing wrong with it. But isn't there a piece okay. that if you're going to reply to stuff, if um, like what I was saying about Seth, that maybe his approach about up to it now the responses seem weird because Seth you can say that's a great terrible lifestyle he's just sitting around smoking weed all day obviously it's not it's also not true because we literally can see you in movies we know you're doing <laughs> something else so this is that part of it too that it's just like a persona that he's over exaggerating what he's saying and they're taking him literally and replying like he li ne literally never gets out of bed and that's all he's doing he's going to be a bum and we're so concerned he may not be able to feed himself when that's not even the case right 
Yeah, I mean, so like I think guess I think a couple of things here to the extent I think anything. I mean, I think people are bored and they're in meetings, you know, playing fantasy hockey and going on Twitter. Like I do most of my tweeting in like random different meeting sessions and so on. But I mean, like, so on the one hand, I think if you say something publicly, people can respond to that. So if you get on the internet and you say, I live the best life ever, um, I hate feminists, have a submissive girlfriend, spend all day smoking pot drink Hennessy six hours. I mean, I've seen all these comments today on Twitter. Like, you know, other people can say, well, it sounds to me like you're an alcoholic or that sounds a little abusive to me, bro. I mean, it, once you put something in the public domain, famous or not, people can respond to it. I do think that people take this stuff way too seriously. I mean, way, way too seriously. First of all, most people are lying when they talk on social media. I mean, like, I'll see buddies from Chicago. I think, Charles, you and I both made this joke, but people will be posing on a beach, and you're like, that's Lake Michigan. Like, you just went downstairs <laughs> from your condo apartment, and you're sitting outside. I mean, so, like, people are lying. People are exaggerating points. It doesn't matter anyway. But, yeah, I think a lot of people are bored. A lot of people are angry right now, a lot of political and racial tensions. So if you go into the public sphere, you you run that risk. And, like, last thing, that's actually why I don't, like, I don't think I've posted a picture of Jane, for example, or my pets or anything like that on social media for like three years, because I don't want crazy people like looking for my house or, or something like that. Or so, just spending hours talking about your girlfriend, talking about your fiance. Talking, I don't like her. I think she's pretty. I think she's ugly. I hate her. Well, he could do better. Oh, yeah, that's he exactly do- right. Like, there's a guy online. Who's the white liberal guy? Armand Domaleski, like Polish guy. I think used to be a hooper, cool guy. But he'll like a little too far to the left. But he posted a picture with his girlfriend, and it was just him and his girlfriend. His girlfriend's Asian, and there was just nothing in the picture. It was like them in a kitchen. And people started responding to it, saying things like interracial dating shouldn't happen. She's too good looking for you, you know, uh, just on and on. And it was it was unbelievable. It's like that meme of you post a picture of a stick and people start arguing about it. So, yeah, there there is that risk, like where you post a picture of a cat. People like fuck cats. I'm a dog, man. That's a joke about the Internet. And now I have no respect for you anymore. (laughs) <laughs> i once said i was a male cat lover and yep. like people i think i'm kind of a joke i do love cats but people started dming me like bro you're gay like people <laughs> really went to another <laughs> level because you have <laughs> these like i have a hundred thousand twitter followers i mean all of us are in the the thousands the tens of thousands <laughs> and i mean if you have that audience it's like cranks writing to the local paper like you know that's a picture of a cat. But why didn't you adopt from the shelter, you selfish son of a bitch? That's the kind of thing you get. Well, no, I lo- I, no I, I, you- yeah, well, I for one, I love that. I, I love when the DMs come, you know, because oh, yeah. the people like it's like I, they don't even want this to be public. And it's like, well, of course, I'm going to screenshot this shit and, and you know, <laughs> put it out. Um, I think I think I think with, with Seth Rogen, and Charles, I think you brought up a really good point. It's like. The man is incredibly successful and he has a, like a huge body of work, whether you're a fan of his or not. I mean, the, the guy's been in the been doing this for, I think, well over 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Super Bad was, uh, I think, a, a great movie. The you know 40 year old virgin, I think, uh, still holds up. Um, you know, that that being said, I think the his public persona uh, is very grating. And very, very annoying. And I'll give you guys like just just an example. I used to live in in Los Angeles, and there's a a chain of burger restaurants called Umami Burger, and they're excellent. It's like you know a fifteen sixteen dollar burger. So it's like you know you're going to this burger joint, you want to enjoy this thing. Uh, I go to the Umami Burger, I get this delicious burger. I'm about to you know bite into it, and behind me is like the loudest dude doing like the worst, the worst Seth Rogen impression you can imagine. Just like giggling between every single syllable. And I turn around and it's Seth Rogen. Like this fucking guy is a, is a caricature of himself right behind me and is ruining my hamburger. (laughs) You know? So I think there, there's been a number of times when he's spoken, you know, publicly about, you know, similar things like this lifestyle and, and all that, that I think people just find grating and annoying. Uh, a couple of years ago, he commented about uh, crime in uh, in San Francisco, oh, yeah. basically saying, like, uh, my, my car has been broken into hundreds of times and I, I don't care. Like, I don't really 
a car's not that important to me. Like, you know, just like get over it. And it's like, wow, you're really showing just how, um, you know, divorced from the normal, you know, from reality you are, because like, if you're a normal person working a nine to five or whatever, trying to make it paycheck to paycheck, you get your car broken into that is like, like a huge, huge spin that on, on your life. So I, I think that, you know, he's sort of like catnip for a lot of people, especially people on the right to point out, like, you know, here's this, you know, uh, you know, champagne socialist, you know, asshole who's spouting ab about how great his life is. And it, some of the stuff that he talks about is rather, rather pathetic. Yeah. Um, I think that, yeah. And that's how we got into the Twitter thing. So uh, Will made a good point because he's like, not only is, you know, you you make a post public, people have the right to comment on it. But it's not just that he's lying or, or just making a point that, you know, not really being truthful about how lazy his life is, but it's the fact that thousands of people are responding to it knowing that it's not true. Whatever you think of him, like you say, I don't really care about left, right and politics. I don't, I hate the guy, so I'm going I'm to lie on the guy. The guy is not in the house 24 hours a day. You know it, but you're, you're getting yourself worked up about him doing that. And that's what I find with a lot of, I guess we can move to that segment of the, the Twitter about things that, that are trending. I look at some of the things that are trending and they fascinate me. I sent you all one. I know you saw the video, but I wanted to, you all to, to remember it and, and how, I mean, Will would probably better understand and, be, and can speak more to, uh, maybe you can, you two can, the comments on it, but just how it, some things just blow up and you look around it's like, why? Right. Uh, Lou, I'll go to you because I know I reminded them and I don't think I reminded you, so I'll get a fresher reaction. It was the video of the, the white girls dancing with rap music playing. I believe it was at Mardi Gras. I mean, I, mean, I don't know if people really knew it. It just assumed it because there were bees because I've gotten bees not at Mardi Gras. But I just uh, sent out a tweet maybe a week after people were commenting on it with no comment. It's just like, Explain to me why this is trending, why this has almost 50 million views. It had 49 million views. And they're just dancing. And then and, and then to my comment, people are like, well, it's because it's a bunch of women drinking. I'm like, a bunch of drunk women. How do you know they're drunk? And the only response I got was, well, they're at Mardi Gras. Right? So you don't really know they're drunk, right? And what are they doing? They're not harming anybody. But it became like proxy, like all these things do, of something else. I assume you remember that video. Why do you think it was so big? Well, well, yeah, it's like, no, but why are you right to assume that I remember that video? Like the idea, like even, even your description of it is just, it, it's just, it, it's so like, really, that's, that's what, you know, that's what we're talking about. I, I, I remember seeing the video multiple times. I didn't even watch it with sound. I just saw like, just, a, it's like a group of right. they look like college girls dancing and they have, and they're like dressed up. And then, uh, yeah, I, I was very much like, I don't see what, what's wrong here. But of course, like, you know, you know, Twitter being Twitter or X being X, you know, you start to look down and it's like, it's like, uh, you know, there goes our white women and stuff like that, you know. Uh, uh, no black people in the video, mind you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Taken by black men. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, oh, this like, the, you know, the degradation of, you know, of, uh, you know, whiteness or whatever. It was just, uh, it, it's me. And I wonder how much, you know, I wonder how much of that are, like bots and, and stuff, just like, you know, white woman in video, then the, you know, the, the bots go crazy <laughs> for it. Yeah. It's, it's, um, that's, that's true. But at, at 50 million, you gotta be, realize, you know, believe that there's a good percentage of people who are actually real people on there. But yeah, yeah they would say, as is the case with this, most of the time, Barrington, they all say, it's funny to watch almost if you had time, but I don't get pulled myself in the rabbit hole because their comments but then every comment are just like total opposite ends of every comment. Like somebody will say, you know, this is that terrible black culture. Somebody else will say, this is this is white trash at its finest. Somebody yes. else will say, you know, they need they need Jesus because the look of the way they're dancing around and everybody else will be talking about, everyone has their clothes on and it just looks like they're standing there. You know, they're drunk, but you can't see any of you know, everything. It's like the comments don't even match what's in the video. They just feel drawn to it for some reason. It's hilarious to me because I know, like, I didn't know what video you were talking about until I looked at the DMs and then I saw the videos and I remembered it instantly because before I commented on this, and this is why I love uh, Twitter or X 
as a very good experiment as far as human psychology goes, because I literally scanned the the, um, the comments and then I stirred the pot. I forget what I said, but I said something along the lines of to where like a lot of white guys say that um they're they're losing their white women to black guys or something along those lines. And I said something along those lines and people were livid. And I was just like, like um, Lou said, I didn't even turn the sound on. I didn't even have to know what was going on. These are just women dancing at a gas station, which clearly is like, like not harmful at all or anything like that. And people were really pissed off. And the crazy thing about it is, and I always go back to this, nobody I know in real life as yep. of my age, of you guys' age, know anything about this, nor do they care about this. <laughs> but yet, you have some of the biggest, hardest hitters on con- the conservative internet, like ha- writing think pieces about this <laughs> when it when it does it not even matter at the end of the day. Well, one, okay, Will. one thing that Barrington just said there that I think is worth calling out is that no one th- there's a total distinction a lot of times between the internet or at least the part of the internet where people get really intense. They're not just posting memes and real life. So like my own experience with this, I had a, but I had, one of my friends is a sexologist. And like, I took some basic questions from this relationship survey. Like, would you date a guy who watches porn or plays a lot of video games? Or would you date a feminist for men? And the usual, the no rate is like, yeah, it's kind of lame. 10% no. And I put them on Twitter and like the majority of people were still like, yeah, as long as they were cool. But like 40% of people to each one of these questions were like, no, and here's why. Absolutely not. And I I think one thing that plays into that is just that Twitter, the other niche social media sites, I mean, I get Reddit would be even worse. 4chan would be crazy. But they attract people who are like really committed neurotics who care enough about their cause to follow it online. And I think it's really important to distinguish those people from reality. Like if you just went to a bar and asked a bunch of guys like, Assuming she's faithful now, would you date a woman that had, quote unquote, 10 bodies, that had lovers in the past? Almost everyone in practice doesn't much care. If you ask that on social media, you get this hysterical reaction where like devout Christians, like men's rights activists, feminists, all these people jump in and start screaming at each other. That's because every single one of those people is on Twitter. Like in reality, those are tiny niche populations. And hopefully I'm not just rambling about this, but like the thing with the white girls video was just like alt-right racist we're really pissed off about it. Like, this I don't thing. call everything racist, but these were like legitimately guys like shaking their asses, like Negroids <laughs> in the jungle. Like it was this <laughs> idea that white working class kids are picking up hip hop culture and that's because they're being corrupted by blacks. Briefly, and I just want to say this in um in, in response to, to Will, because this I don't think that any of these people are honest. And that's the thing about it. I've seen where you post those questions before, and they're mostly answered by people, in my opinion, who don't have profile pictures. If they do have profile oh, yeah. pictures, like, come, come on, bro. We know that you have not even smelled the sweet fragrance of a woman in five years. <laughs> so, so, like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? That's all. I'm saying. Well, Lou, I want to say this to you, and that's funny. And and I and 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 I don't. I'm not going to bash the social media writ large the whole time. There's some good things from it. We'll talk about some of those later. But to right. Will's point, Will does a good job, and some others do. So I'm not knocking all of it. But you know, I've said that to Will because Will's good at u- using Twitter, and he'll put the polls up and all that kind of thing. And I'm like, the problem with it is, um, it skews. You know, obviously. Lou, you mentioned before bots. There are lots of bots, but even if you take the bots out, it skews in in a way that from reality, from the normal society, in the sense that the people who are on, you gotta because if I looked it up a week ago, I forgot it because I want to see how many people are, were on Twitter in America, and it was a higher number than I thought. But then it, you you get the like I have friends on Facebook, they have an account, so they count. Mm-hmm. But they haven't been on it in you know a year. They open somebody sent them a link. They open it, but they don't post anything. They don't search it. So that's a large percentage of people. You take the bots out. The active people tend to be people who are in journalists, celebrities, you know, influencers, all these types, and they skew more, you know, formally educated than society. They skew more news savvy than society. So you're already you know narrowing it to a certain pool of people, and then. Barrett is right. Uh, I got to say, I've been guilty of doing it before, but uh, some of these people just lie. They just want to see what the poll looks like if they skew a poll. It's like people who get fed up at political polls, so they just answer the phone and say, I'm voting for Nixon. So <laughs> so wh- what do you think about that from a standpoint of, you know, 
when you have these debates or any polls or anything on Twitter, how much reality you're getting out of it? Well, <clears throat> well, something that I'm always surprised when I, you know, come across some profiles where like there are people who have an opportunity to lie and yet they have created just like a loser kind of profile, you know, like where it's like, you know, you could you know, like you could put a, a, a picture of like an AI generated dude up, you know, or make yourself look <laughs> taller or or more successful. And yet you just, you know, you kept you went down the the loser route. So in in a, in a way, I, I wonder, it's almost like some people are, are even limited in their ability to lie. Mm. It's like they can't, you know, they can't even step too far away from it to become like a a character, a cool, you know, a cooler character. Uh -huh. Oh, I, I, to that, there's another thing that, that brings me to another thing I want to say. So I like that. So some of them may be lying, but usually some of them aren't lying because they simply can't lie because they get swept up in something probably or maybe some you mm -hmm. know, psychological thing. That leads me to the piece I mentioned uh, earlier uh, to Barrington about oversharing the, this, this, this group of people who post everything. It's like, I thought the people who, the older people, the old people my age, on Facebook posting pictures of the food was bad, but these people are posting everything. They're posting what their kids are doing, that the kids got in yeah. trouble, that they're taking pictures of all their, their personal stuff. And then another one of the viral videos that, that I thought about, I know you've all seen this one, and it's and and again for me, I get to the point that it's not about the debate. So I don't necessarily agree with the person if they're saying something racist or they're trying to imply stuff. It's like, how do you get so worked up? Or how did we get here? It's the video of the black female pilot landing the plane. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everybody's reacting like, let me see that. But I'm sure uh, all of you didn't look at it the way I did. All of you probably looked at the person, because the person who posted, I, I read it, they didn't say it, but they were implying certain things, like, yeah, DEI, whatever. Will and I talked about the I ignorance of planes falling out of the sky. It's like, this is going to be bad. Where are we going to be with this, right? So everybody's looking at it from that saying, looking at the comments, she's doing everything fine. I'm a pilot. Oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. You know what I saw when I looked at the video? Why are you posting it? Why do I need to see a picture of you laying in the plane? It's a 14 second video. It's not like you 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 setting it up with all right. Here I am. This is my three third month of flying. This is my first solo. Check it out. Woo! It's just you know 10 seconds and out. And so everybody's supposed to be yes queen, right? <laughs> so so they're knocking the person for saying this is bad for DEI, rightfully so. But 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 if 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 the person who posted it was giving you the whole the. But you've seen it that the, the all the, the scariest thing to white America. And it was like an all black. Uh, crew on a flight, the flight anyway, was, pilot, whatever. I, I I said that like the anti DEI think that Soul Plane is a documentary, basically. <laughs> right. So <laughs> on the one hand, they're doing that. They're like, look, everybody's black. Right. Your worst nightmare. And the other person said, oh god, it's the black black pilot. Everything's going bad. But they're all trying to create some false narrative, like that. Her landing that plane meant more than it. It's, it's not you know one. It's like she didn't land it on the moon or Mars. Right. I mean, well, I actually think that's a good way of putting it, that like people on social media post just mundane shit and people who are really selected neurotics take that and they think it's a representation of something they think is going on in society. Like, I don't even think that pilot, by the way, if any of you guys have a buddy that like flies a small plane, the pilot was pretty good. Like the pilot didn't do anything wrong. It was a black person flying a plane. Mm -hmm. But I mean... I think I'm not even sure the pilot posted that because I mean she's flying the plane like she's not in the she's not like taking a selfie. Yeah, she could have told uh, a plane to do it though. Yeah, but I mean like it, yeah, if it's it's probably <laughs> someone from the airline filming like five reasonably good pilots for an instructional video or something, mm -hmm. and the clip leaks, and then all of a sudden people start freaking out like, yes, a black Nubian queen, we invented airplanes in the first place, you know, and that draws. <laughs> You know, made the ancient days, and that draws the the white racist response. By the way, just because we, I mean, we got a decent sized audience. I'm going to drop this again. I said this on Twitter. Um, the percentage of pilots that are black or Asian is like five. It's three percent black guys, two percent Asian guys, and they're actually among the best pilots. Like they almost all have a military background. There aren't that many people in those two groups that want to fly planes for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So th there's no DEI issue. Like if a plane crashes. The odds that the really well qualified minority pilot was in the cockpit are zero. So it's it's just a it's one of many bullshit controversies. Like there are very few minority pilots and they're quite good. The whole thing's just not real. Planes are crashing. Oh, they're not even crashing. Planes are having dumb stuff happen to them 
Because if you're a first or second year pilot, you make like $20,000 a year and you work like 60 hours a week. This has been a longstanding problem in aviation. People are just focusing on it now because it feeds into this whole DEI fight. Boom. Yes, absolutely. And then I can attest, one of my childhood friends is a pilot. He's a commercial pilot. And he's been a pilot way before this DEI stuff came out. And he just laughs at it because he's like, bro, it's not that many of us, like you say. But I look at it in a couple of different ways, especially because we're on a, a social media platform like Twitter, where controversy sells and people need attention. So like you said, it could have been a video that leaked or it could have been someone that videotaped um, the woman flying and said, hey, they're gonna, we're gonna show them that black women can fly planes. It could be so many reasons why um, this video was showcased in my opinion. But I think ultimately what it boils down to is that Twitter right now loves the gender wars, it loves the race wars, it loves these things because it draws attention to the platform. And as long as the attention, excuse me, as long as the platform um, gets attention, it makes money. And I think that that's what the the, the bulk of all of this, these conversations or these dichotomies um, have to do with that we're always paying attention to when we uh, log on to the platform. That's actually one point that I don't think any of us has made. There's also like a financial incentive for a lot of these assholes like on <laughs> left and right like i mean when people ask like why would you post that demeaning white or black women or whatever is whores the answer is because they're going to be two thousand black or caucasian women in the comments and you get paid like six cents per comment when i broke it down that's why people are doing that i mean like the guy who um i don't really have beef with this guy but like ian miles chong like the fourth or fifth mm. most influential conservative influencer online when they rate those people lives in malaysia like he lives in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. If you have any of his actual private social media, like he, he regularly writes in languages other than English. The reason he's posting this American content is that they're mo most of the Twitter users, half of them or whatever, yeah, are in America. So he'll take a video of like a white and black person fighting in like Yonkers and drop it online and say like, how can we continue to survive as a society? And people have begun responding to him and saying, well, you don't live here. You have no idea what we need to do to survive as a society. Like you live in a more diverse country on the other side of the world. And hopefully that'll have some impact. Lou, you know, what happens when, you know, you have a co-host and you've been doing this so long, you just kind of tee each other up. And mm -hmm. that leads me to the other thing. Who are the influencers and who are they, the influencers influencing? I, I mean, I, I look at some of these people, I'm trying not to not mention names, but I have some in front of me and they might slip out. And it's not even a knock on them, but some of them you agree with or you don't. But even if you agree with them, they're not saying anything different than anyone else. There are people on Twitter who I believe are profound. They don't have a million followers, though. <laughs> so it's not these people. So you know, they'll say some things you disagree with. Like, say, yeah, that makes sense. But most people, nothing earth shattering, though, right? So I, I, you know, why would people, you know, a half a million people be hanging on the edge of the seat to listen to, I don't know, arbitrary, I mean, I'm making this up. There's no real person like this on Twitter. But let's say a 27 year old unmarried person talking about relationships, hypothetically. <laughs> hypothetically. And all of you know exactly that, the name. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. I, Why? Well, I think, um, you know, one of the, um, I don't know how long it's been around on X, but the, the for you, Thing. So it's like you have oh, people yeah, you're yeah, following, yeah. then the for you. And that's all that I'm on is is for you. I know I'm following people, but I mean Twitter knows it it, it knows I don't even know if it, it knows how to tickle me. It, it's fun. Like it puts it's it puts shit in front of me that <laughs> you know it might it might maybe like oh I'm a little shit. bit but yeah, sometimes literal <laughs> shit. And then I go to like the past few days, like all it's been are all these just just fucking losers complaining about landlords like that that oh, that's yeah, all yeah. that's all that's being fed to me is like you know just like these people who you think like ah he must be like a must be like a teenager it's like no this dude's 45 45 <laughs> year old man complaining that he has to go to work and he has to pay rent uh and twitter knows that i'm going to i'm i'm going to you know i'm going to check this uh this guy out will doesn't see that stuff he just sees cats videos <laughs> well, actually, that I, I think I told you that once and you've teased me about it a couple of times, but like your Twitter timeline or your Facebook page is literally karma. Like there's a there's a quirk in the algorithm where if you 
And I, I find this fascinating. If you like something, you're generally shown it, like when I tried to count five to seven more times. So what you are afraid of or titillated by becomes most of your feed. Like if you click on one of those black guy, white guy fight videos, you're going to be shown five more of them. Right. And mm -hmm. so the whole thing is you're going to keep saying when people say like, I've seen the videos, I know crime is up. You've seen the videos and there are only like 50 of them across all sides because right. you liked four in a row and they're going to keep showing them to you in Rota. So yeah, I actually like, I do sometimes click on things like cat, you know, like, I actually once Googled male cat lovers and there are all these groups of guys like meeting and they have their cats at parks. And I'm not going to do this, <laughs> but I mean, like it was just sort of like, so you see these cute animals running around and that actually is a break or I'll follow like the Holocaust museum or something. Not that they have light cheery content, but you know, it's a, it's a right. break. It's a little, little deeper intellectually. Um, Is there a problem you all think I'll start with you, Barrington with, social with politicians on social media are they like lo lowering themselves to be celebrities and and getting away from what they yeah you know, the one that sticks out the most to me it's been a while i don't know if you all remember this one it's not as big as the white girls dancing but it was aoc and somebody maybe mtg or one of the others getting no they were getting into it on Twitter. They were like literally like calling each other name and all this stuff. And it, of course, everybody on the left is on one person. Everybody's on the, on the right. On the other side, I'm like, what's wrong with them? Forget about them. They, they have a problem with them. But all of you people picking a side, these are elected officials who right. write legislation and make 200 plus thousand dollars a year if they're on committees and all this other stuff. And have serious, you know, power in the government fighting on social media and you all are okay with it. Right. So don't you think that, uh, I mean, I think, I'm not going to tell you what you think, but what are your thoughts, Barrington, on the way the politicians use and behave on Twitter? Oh, I hate it. Um, the, the, the respectability of uh, the federal office has been removed. The esteem and the prestige of the federal office has been totally removed, completely removed. I don't want to say who did it, it started with. I can't say that because I feel like the media plays well much into that and the media kind of steers the opinions that people have about politicians. But when you see their, their own behaviors, that is, of course, if they are actually tweeting from their accounts, when you see their behaviors on social media, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing because these people were elected to be um, representatives of thousands upon millions of people. If you um, add in all the representatives and the millions of people that they represent in the United States mm -hmm. and the way that they gall gallivant around um, you know, looking to be famous, looking to have a one up on their political rivals when we know that behind closed doors that they're all friends. It's embarrassing. It's, it's, to it's totally embarrassing. And I feel that um, it doesn't like like our 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 political spectrum of the United States has become a circus. That's all it is. Everyone's looking to build their profiles. Everyone's looking to have um, a hot tweet or a hot uh, video shot that that's going to be shared all because of the dopamine, again, the dopamine releases that happen from social media and the news and the attention they get. And it's just, it's just a complete shit show, just to be honest. Will, are they even managing their own social media accounts? What do you think? I think it depends. I mean, so yeah, first of all, I agree with Barrington that it, it is embarrassing to see politicians do this stuff. I mean, like you're a congressman, you represent 700,000 people. There is ideally a level of dignity that goes along with that. Like, I mean, we all have real jobs and make jokes on this show and so on. But like when you see like AOC and MTG and they didn't quite get to this level, but saying things like broke ass hoe to each other. I mean, like it's, <laughs> it's a bunch of it's the leaders of the country doing this. Right. I mean, like AOC's on TikTok talking about how she can't fix her garbage disposal. Like Lauren Boebert is, you know, doing some things in the theater. Like there is an idea <laughs> that you should be discreet and civilized, whatever your personal tastes are, if you're a leader. Like, you know, kids watch you, foreign dignitaries are going to make serious deals with you and so on. So, yeah, I, I agree that a lot of it's pretty embarrassing. Are they managing their accounts? Like, I think AOC and Lauren Boebert are. I mean, no, one's, they no are. intern's going to post that, you know, like. Here I am on a solid second date. Like that's not that's not the kind of content your team is going to put up there for you. Right. Um, other people like Joe Biden obviously doesn't manage his account. Right. I mean, like Joe Biden is a guy who's in his eighties. I mean, he's sometimes seems very very functional. More often, seems like he can barely talk. He's talking about ice cream. I mean, so when you see a post oh, I like, like I absolutely think 
that the Biden-Harris administration is best suited to move this country forward in the wake of Mr. Trump's ill-planned bloodbath. Tw- like, obviously, Uncle Joe's not writing that. So I, I think it varies <laughs> with the person. Uh, Trump, obviously, Trump manages his social media. Again, like no intern is ever going to say any of that stuff. Well, I disagree with you. I disagree with you. I think I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions of social media within the last 10 years. I legitimately think that Trump has a team of tweeters. Like when he was on Twitter, really? I leg- I like like I legitimately think that he has a team of tweeters. And the reason I say this is because he's also an old man and as much as we like to believe um that he controls his Twitter, in my opinion, how calculated his tweets were, if you like if you like look at his old tweets especially when he was live tweeting, I really believe this is a group of people that sat in a room and tweeted for Donald Trump, I really, I, I no one can. But, but he has to be one of the tweeters, though, right? Because sometimes it's in his voice. They'd well, have to really... pull up. That's He's what like, I'm let me find what yes. the latest Trump tweet is. Go to like pull up his um true social when he was um live tweeting the Oscars. Oh, he was live tweeting the Oscars, huh? Yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing. Was he? <laughs> Barrington's on it, man. I tell you. Oh, uh, why? Why he's looking that up? Or do you have any thoughts on politicians, Lou? Yeah, so uh, like I guess one thing you know you would know we notice is that there's you know their personal account and then there's their like official right. account. Yep. Um, so you but know that's I think- mostly just because people have been suing because of the Trump phenomenon and people say you don't have the right to block me, to so block I, have, I have a personal account I can block you. <laughs> right. So you know so sometimes you know uh, I'm really just taken aback and su- surprised by what goes out. So for example. Like the Attorney General of New York, Letitia uh, Letitia okay. James. Mm-hmm. I mean, the stuff that she posts, you know, from the official account, like going after Trump. I, you know, I look at it and I'm like, look, I don't care if you're for Trump or against Trump. This should really gross you out. Mm. That you know, it's a, it's obviously a personal vendetta that right, she right. has. Aha! Uh-huh, you got to pay money and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, and it's like. I, Whoa, how that's I, going down is really I, I do think so i did pull up true social and okay, i, I do think a lot of these these tweets that these people say that are just crazy are from them like lose right about james but like here's trump numerous businesses have ended plans to relocate into new york because of the fabricated witch hunt against me donald trump <laughs> they see what is going on and they want no part of it three exclamation marks Little peekaboo James, the racist and corrupt AG, is considered the worst attorney general in the country. She spends all her time and money going after Trump, all caps, and almost nothing on fighting violent crime, all caps. Judge Ingoron, spelled wrong, is a flake, radical left Trump hater who despises and disrespects the appellate division and refuses to do as they say. He considers them a joke, so bad and dangerous for New York State's system of justice. Like, I... You know, he's on trial right now. Like, I don't think that there's some 24-year-old kid who went to Brown that's saying, okay, I'm going to make big moves today. I think, like, when Trump says things that are totally coherent, as with Biden, yeah, Barrington's probably right. But, I I mean, I think the big guy definitely has the logins, and he'll go in and and say some stuff. Yeah, Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we got it. We got got it. We come to a consistency on that. Um, The last thing I want to say is... uh, Another, I guess, kind of serious one if, after we follow politicians is that it, we're kind of blurring the line of right and wrong, not sometimes intentionally, you know, obviously, but in some ways it's just because the nature of Twitter, no, I, I can't keep saying Twitter next, so just the nature of Twitter in the sense that you can't really have a nuanced conversation about things on it. So even if you try to be, um, you know, I think thought provoking. You you have a real thought. You're not trying to be a flamethrower, or you're not trying to start a Twitter fight. You just want to make a point. It always ends up going off the rails. I know. I mentioned to to you all earlier. You know, I'm having David Marcus. We're having David Marcus on next week to talk about his tweet about the about racism in Gen X, and that just went totally you know into left field with comments about uh, separate water fountains and you know. Um, you know, the dragging of James Bird and TV shows and all this nonsense. And, you know, b- part of it, obviously, is because of he didn't write a five paragraph graph explanation of what he meant. And but I don't think it would have mattered much based on the conversation. But it's not only that we can do pretty much any of the hot button issues. I know uh, Barrington himself, he, he replies and we can get into this, but he replies 
you know, about a lot of things he likes or dislikes about what people say, you know, since the Israel Hamas thing. And I'm sure that some of the people will read some of your tweets and be like, he's anti-Semitic, right? I'm sure you, you've you had yeah. that kind of uh, attack, but it's, it's Twitter. So somebody, you're responding to somebody talking about something and you might just say, this is ridiculous or yeah, this is what they'd expect. This is what Americans want to spend that tax dollar on. Something really short. And then it becomes this extreme, like, uh, um, one-sided view of things. So while it's good to put information out there so people can see it, it's an easy way for people to see it, but what are your thoughts, and I'll go to you first, Barrington, since I mentioned that at you as an example, but what are your thoughts about people trying to have serious geopolitical uh, and ending racism and all these very high-level and important conversations on... Um, a platform we've already said it's it's is rife with bots, you know, people lying, people trying to grifters and disingenuous people. I think you have to basically have a filter on in respect to specific conversations. Like um, I come in on Will's tweets a lot because I know that I can get um, an honest discourse. You come in on my tweets because you know you can get an honest discourse, even if it's not on the timeline, it's within the DMs. Right. You have certain people that are, in my opinion, like looking to be triggered, like they want to be triggered because, so that they can get either score a point for themselves personally or they can score a point for their side. And I think that it's very interesting. I know you guys have seen my, a lot of my tweets over the last couple of years where, for example, the um, foundational black Americans hate my guts. They absolutely hate my guts, but it doesn't really shake me because I understand that this is something that they're really passionate about, but it's not going to stop me from having a, a proper discourse or respectful discourse or stating uh, my five cents at three because of inflation. So, um, <laughs> like, I think you just have to, you have to like judge who you're talking to and what's being talked about because anytime you have these hot button issues, whether it be um, Israel, Palestine, whether it be the gender wars, whether it be anything involving race, people are legitimately waiting for you to say the wrong thing so, so they can go to, on the attack and then they can get um, the rest of their minions in to attack you. Well, what do you think? I know that uh, outside of the polls, you, you 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 do a lot of questions. So you don't get into to fights about stuff. It's like, you know, you know you're making a comment here. They have a lot of your stuff. Is, I, I saw this, what are your thoughts on it? So it's kind of hard to attack you, but you've seen this you know, people try to have reasonable dialogues and it and it all falls apart. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, I don't really like, I, I mean, I would argue with one of you guys. Well, I can respect all of you. I argue with some people that are like scientists that are on the hard, mm -hmm. hard right or the left, you know, but like in general, I don't really have a lot of patience for like, I value my time at a certain rate. I don't have a lot of patience for someone with like the Roman statue or like female symbol or whatever profile picture, just like yelling. I just block people. I mean, I have like several thousand people blocked and it's really made the environment much more pleasant. So that would be my piece of advice for like young executives out there or something. Like, you don't have hours to waste on that bullshit. But uh, in terms of what do I think about just people who I'd engage with and someone else's thread or something? Um, yeah, I think there are a lot of bad faith actors on social. I mean, part of that's just because there are a lot of bad faith actors in life. Mm -hmm. And if you have sort of snake like tendencies, you can't really express that with your close friends or your fan, your mom, you know, but if you're in that anonymous zone, that can really come out. So a lot of the comments like female friends, I think guys get it almost as bad at least probably just less, less threateningly, but female friends have shown me tweets like I'm going to kill you. I'm going to rape you. And it's always from someone that's anonymous. You, you just can't do that in regular life. You can take your passion for your cause and direct it as intensely as you want at like MFs you don't know on the internet. Um, and I, I think that's pretty much it. You have a lot of neurotics, like I said earlier, on these kind of platforms. People are really, really passionate. Like the percentage of people in terms of my questions about would you date, who really care about like pornography or video games, certainly, or moderate feminism or something like that. In day-to-day -day life, it's very low. But if you have that passionate cause now, you can go on Twitter, TikTok, Facebook for the older guys and find like a whole community of 100,000 other people that have that same quirky taste. And you can view yourself as kind of representing for that community in every argument. So last thing, but like, obviously, yeah, people overuse words and try to make points to the detriment of others. And you see that with every term like racism. The new one is genocide. Like you can feel you. I mean, you can have either a take on either side. The Israelis and the Arabs have obviously been fighting for a long time. I don't think either group has been perfectly diplomatic. 
But when people say, well, there's a war that's killed 30,000 people, that's the worst genocide in history, you're just lying. And at a certain level, you have to know that. What you're doing is kind of making a point for the audience. And yeah, that's that's really prevalent on the debate platforms. I don't even know what to do about it other than like, mute people, block people. I want to go to you a little bit before I say that. I got to I got to say something about that because I was just in a in a uh, I won't say a debate because I won't go that far. I just comment and I move on because these people are crazy. So mm -hmm. whatever your thoughts, like Will said, on either side of this, the genocide word he used. Apparently, so there's a bakery in Brooklyn that people were trying to protest and say don't go because they're owned by Jews. So a friend of mine who is Jewish and lives in New York posted, hey, go support this restaurant because people are trying to, you know, hurt their business. They're really good people and they have great pastries. And someone says, I won't go to I won't go to a place that uh is not not supporting. Go look at I'll send it to see you tweet. Didn't say supporting, committing genocide. So I said, the bakery in Brooklyn is committing genocide? Hmm. To which the person replied, well, they're supporting it and probably financially. Well, that's, I'm not going to get into that. You don't know what they're doing with their money. But that is vastly different than the accusation you made. You said this bakery is committing, like they bake goods and put them out in the case and then they kill scores of people in the back room is what you're saying. <laughs> This is insanity. So I had to put that out there. It's a whole next level of what Will's talking about, calling everything genocide. But Lou, I want to know what you think about, you know, trying to have a nuanced conversation. And do you avoid that problem being a comedian? Because I, I love Lou because Lou thinks like me. He's, he's a pro. I'm not a professional comedian. But I'm a sarcastic asshole. So I just tweet, you know, I don't have time to get in a debate with somebody. So somebody will say something crazy. And I'll just say, well, no, what you really mean is this. And then I go away. So I see a lot of his comments are just very right in your face, you know, hit them and move on. But what do you think about the people trying to have discourse? Well, 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 one thing about about that bakery, I remember years ago when um, Dunkin Donuts and Baskin Robbins got together, mm -hmm. you know, so you'd be able to get your donuts and your ice cream. So the idea you can get genocide and your bakery at the same place. I mean, that's a that sounds like that's a, a winner. Of, yeah. 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 Um, I have a, I have a, a friend of mine who reminds me all the time. He's like, yeah, man, you know, if uh, if people only know you from your tweets and, and what you put out, he's like, they're going to think you're a really bad person. <laughs> he's like, but you're not. He's like, when I, you know, you're a sweet guy and, you know, we have such a great time and you're down to have, you know, a conversation. Um, so I think that's sort of, uh, you know, I, I think I'm fortunate in that so much of my career is 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 comedy based, you know, so it's like. I'm making videos and I'm throwing out jokes and, and and that sort of thing. So I'm swimming, you know, in that, um, you know, in, in that, uh, environment, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, then another side of me is like, man, yeah. What if like, you know, people are looking or seeing this stuff and they're like, I don't want to work with that guy. Who, who's this guy? I don't want to, you know? So I don't know if I, it, in a way it's sort of a, it, it's kind of a catch 22. Cause I feel like, um, the, any success that I've had has been because I've been outspoken and willing to, to make a joke, to put my ideas out there. But at the same time, maybe that's closed some other doors, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I think, do I want to ask you a question for, no, I'll, I'll ask you your question last. Uh, what, what I want to say now, you know, the good, obviously there's people out there that get the word out to a lot of positive things. And if you use it properly, you can get some good things from, from Twitter. So, Absolutely. Who, if you all, can you all think of anyone? I know I'm putting you on the spot because I didn't ask this in advance, but uh, anyone that you think is doing it right, I, uh, you know, um, um, present company excluded. I mean, we could all say will, but who's who's doing it right? Who's using it well? Who's using their life? Who's got it? Gained a large following, and they're using it not to make themselves rich and famous, but to uh, put forth some thing, fix something, improve the country, spread information. Anybody? think of anyone there's this kid and i say kid because he's younger than all of us even younger than me That's and young. he was <laughs> yes and he lives in chicago and um i love i absolutely love his content because um he does like um he does science and like he knows about electricity Stop the kid out! huh who's the kid tell everybody who the kid is i can't i can't i can't think of his i can't think of his name but great. He, he's like, so great can't, yeah, he, he is like um like he drives a Chicago model, a model science car. kid. Yes, he's light skinned, he has long curly hair. And um he was like like for example, he was showing 
how to make, how to bake a cake using um, a stove or an oven, like back from 1915 or whatever. And he was like, he shows like a lot of things, a lot of technology back in the day that's like more efficient than technology we have today. And I learned so much just from just watching his content. I love it. So I'm, I'm going to think of it. Either find him while the others give an answer, or draw yeah. a picture and then hold it up. Draw his picture and then hold it up. So people, <laughs> the, the guy's got to get a couple follows because of that. Uh, Doc, I got it. I got it. Doctor is, is Doctor Parkinstein. It's a uh, Doctor underscore Parkinstein. P A R K I N S T I N E. He's his bio is peeking up where Nik Nikola Tesla left off. Great content. Uh, Nikola Tesla. Uh, Lou. Man, I'm 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 looking for him right now. He's a um. He's an author. I think he he writes a lot of uh, sci-fi mm. books. Mm. And like uh, a couple of months back, he started. Um, uh, he, he writes like very long responses, you know. Mm -hmm. And and that and that's the thing too. It's very rare to see somebody like they will put like basically an article's worth of responses to uh, to things. But I've really enjoyed his stuff. I'm I'm trying to. Uh, this I is always... what happens when you put people on the spot. This is my fault. Here, here, yeah, I got it. De uh, Devin. And I say Erickson. that. His, his, name's, his name is Devin Erickson. Oh, Devin, um, okay. Devin Erickson. And if anybody's looking to follow him, it's Devin underscore Erickson with an E at the end mm -hmm. underscore. And he's an author, engineer, sharpshooter. Part-time demon prince of I don't know that that's some nerdy shit I don't know what that is but, but <laughs> no, no, I, I, that guy, you know actually don't even fuck it don't even follow yeah fuck I'm, this I'm guy get it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. but I've enjoyed I've enjoyed his stuff for sure he's like devil worship <laughs> will I mean I actually think like fun cynicism aside there are actually a lot of people that I think are basically reliable kind of quasi news sources and a lot of them are in that kind of intellectual dark web group that spars with like the hard right and the social justice guys but I mean just like you know off the top uh Colin Wright the biologist who talks about gender and race like Hole, like the yeah, like um, the over, executive yeah. guy who's anonymous and has like the rabbit profile who does all the data he's one of the few people to post about like white and black issues without kind of picking a team and saying yeah. you know everything the other group does is trash look at that suicide rate you know i, I like that guy i mean um who's the black rhetorician his, his name is actually like eric rhetoric but yeah i mean uh eric oh, yeah. the guy who went to um bozeman with a bunch of people to talk about de and all that right what's up eric smith no, it's not Eric Smith. No, uh, let's let me. I'm actually going to search Eric Rhetoric. Oh, I thought it was. Me. But if you, I mean, if you search those words, you'll find the guy. Uh, Eric's Electrons is another guy like that, oh, like Science Account ha happens to be a black dude. Um, we yeah, follow I the mean, same I, people. This is crazy. I'm sorry, for cutting you off, but this is great. Yeah. We follow the same people. Well, yeah, yeah no, it's not a lot of. I mean, there's a lot of good people, but as a percentage, there's not a lot of them, which is why you probably all follow all the same. Right, well, yeah, right. I mean, like twenty percent of the people on Twitter are like actual hookers or porn bots. I mean, like it's just <laughs> like there's there's a high concentration porn of hookers. people that I mean, want to do porn bots. Yeah, but I mean, like, like today I posted a link. Uh, I asked, "Does anyone in Kentucky want to hire interns from KSU and UK? We're looking for people in." Free law, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people are like, yeah, that sounds like a great opportunity. Contact me, whatever. But all these porn bots, they're like four in the thread and a couple in DMs are saying things like, you know, pussy in bio or like there are other ways to pay for college. Like, I mean, if you have some random service to push like X or any of those platforms is good for that. So, right. A lot of good people, a lot of a lot of bad people, a lot of hustlers. Yeah, I'm going to say since Will gave several of them, he didn't do the shout out that several of them have been uh, guests on the show, like Rabbit Hole and Colin Wright. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go with another one, Michael Schellenberg. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. M Michael's good. He's doing good work yeah, um, from Twitter files to what's the recent one? The um, the, the gender. Oh, stuff yeah. The W Path files. Yeah. yeah the w -Path the biggest, files, yeah. biggest gender organization was apparently just rampantly activist like they were admitting right. in their private calls that they didn't this know is bad what, yeah what these puberty blocking drugs were doing to kids and like they would say this kid seems almost suicidal the next question is how we can move that transition along like i would assume they're going to be some pretty major lawsuits there but that whole group that uh ended up doing that like whatever the proceedings were, but they did that anti -DI Matt Taibbi stuff. and all of them. Matt hasn't been on the show. Matt, why haven't you been on the show? Taibbi, Taibbi's a good guy, but like Melissa Chen, like that whole yeah, sector, uh, yeah. Miss Mel Chen. 
And obviously, like, I like Chris Ruffo and so on as, as well yeah, as a guy. Yeah. But, like, there there are a bunch of people that have, like, no real partisan bias that are kind of often center right. And they just sort of give their opinions on things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then last, Barrington asked the question right before we went on. And I was like, I guess I want to know what Will and, and Lou think. Uh, he wanted to know where we get our news from. So where do you get your news from, Will? Uh, primarily at this point, well, there are two sources. One is just social media. Like, I mean, we, we rip on it, but honestly, like I follow like a hundred. It looks shocked. It's like, I'm going to have to unfollow this guy. No, but like a lot of it is <laughs> just like, for girl. example, someone will post something like rabbit hole drop, like an article and I'll look through it like that. It's not just like everyone's half-assed opinion about dating or something. It's that's where a huge stream of information comes from, like new studies and so on. The second thing is like actual academic and like high-end public, like commentary, the magazine outlets. So like I would normally see something on socials or get texted something by a friend in like my group chat or something and then read it. And that article itself would usually be from a scientific journal or it's like the Russian take on the war. It would be something fairly high-end. But that, that's honestly where I get most information. I would never just sit down and watch like MSNBC. Like we're all on those shows. Like, I mean, they're, they're you know, they're good at interviewing, but it's just. They're never inviting us back now. <laughs> no, but I mean, like. I, I, like, I, I would watch that crap. Relation, no, but I have a great relationship with Fox News specifically. <laughs> I mean, but like. To. No, but that that's like 90% of my hits. But yeah, like if if I am like the bad guy on an MSNBC panel and we're all shouting at each other and then like the people that are in the same city go to lunch, I don't really think you're getting a lot of concentrated, dense information out of that. Right. That's right. right. That's true. Lou? Yeah, I'm I, uh, very similar uh, to Will. I think it's uh, that that's where I get it from from social. And, and, you know, a really good thing about social is that, you know, someone can post maybe just a headline, right? And then you can go and search and find the article or if they post the article and, you know, if you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of people like, yeah, this is correct. This is correct. You scroll down enough, you're going to see people saying like, well, actually, you should you guys should read this or, you know, here's the graph that's missing or here's here's the explanation. So I think so I think that that's been a really good thing about uh, social media is that you have the internal debate happening right now. Live, you know, right. right live right there where you almost don't have an excuse just to read, say, one side of it because the other side is just chomping at the bit, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only problem with that is that it takes work. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Funny. And everybody's not a comedian, uh, Lou. Some of us have real jobs. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and mine was boring. I, I feel like I'm, I'm not doing the right thing. I said the local news. I'm one of the weird people just watch the local news, see what's going on in my town. But I guess that means, obviously, I hear about these things. So I do scan social media to see what people are talking about. Although for me, most of the time, it's like, that's not even real stuff like this. It's like you look at what, like I saw Candace Owens trending. And I look at it it's because I guess she went on a breakfast club. I didn't see what it said about that. But then it followed to an uh, interview she did before that when she was talking about she was going on the breakfast club. And they're all liking her now because of her comments on 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 the black community. So finally, see, maybe she doesn't hate black people as so much as I thought it. But her comments were stupid. I'm not gonna get spend a bunch of time because we're ending. But Barrington, were, were her comments did they make you did, did Candace win you win you over with her comments about? Right. If you all haven't seen it, uh, she said, "Well, I, I don't know why people think I don't like black community. I think we're better than than people on a lot of things. I think black people are funnier." I think we're better dancers and we're better singers. I mean, we're better comedians. We're better. I'm like, really? So will the see, genetics see. of being black makes you, she's not saying that being around black people, makes you, but she's like, there's something about blacks that just make them funnier than other people. That's pandering. That's all, that's, that's all pandering. Like, to be honest, I have never, um, to this day, I have never sat down and watched a complete Candace Owens video to even make an opinion about her. The only video I've seen about Candace Owens is when um, her and Mark Lamont Hill was having a conversation, and Mark Lamont Hill about, said that- Oh, we, yeah, trans women and women. That's that's the only clip I've ever seen. That's why I've never really had anything to say about Candace Owens. But I want to answer your news question. I get my news from Ground News, and then I go to social media to check. Ground News is a website that shows you the biases that's been written on a particular topic and then it gives me my Atlanta news um that I need and then if I want to deep dive into something I'll go on social media and then look from someone who I know knows what the, the hell they're talking about yeah real clear is good for that too you know the, the aggregators and things yeah. of that nature just post from but both yeah. sides 
Yeah. Don't know anything about Kenny. Like I felt that that was like I think she's pandering. I think she's trying to she felt and got the understanding of okay, well I'm a black woman. I probably need to say things like positive things about like black people. And this is just my only opinion in thinking about it because I saw that clip. But I've never actually been interested enough to say, hey, let me sit down and see what Candace Owens is about. She'll change your life, Barrington. You better watch uh, the whole video. She will change <laughs> your life. I've never seen shakes. one. I've never <laughs> seen one. Lou, I guess I have to end with you as a resident comedian. Are Blacks funnier than you? <laughs> and why should we watch you when there's plenty of Black people out there? Well, well, here's here's this might be a little a little controversial. For one, I think uh, I mean Richard Pryor is my favorite comedian ever. Patrice O'Neill, like that. So I think I think without a doubt, on an individual basis, <laughs> yes, those are those are some fucking gods of uh, of comedy. Well, one thing that that I that I that I know so just like you know being in comedy for a while and open mics and stuff there's a tendency for a black comedian where the material is basically take a normal activity that white people do and treat it like it's crazy mm -hmm. like i can't believe like 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 you know someone someone saying like you know like oh you know th oh thank you know you're at the with a cashier it's like oh thank you for you know thank you very much my pleasure like my pleasure this was your pleasure. Like, how could somebody even say, like, you know, taking something completely ridiculous and 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 going for it? You can have like a whole fucking act about that. So, in that in that sense, yeah. And well, well, that material didn't do, didn't do well. To I was just thinking it over. I stand corrected. Uh, I just uh, said I just said it's easier to be a black comedian <laughs> today. Yeah. Might be. It might be no, really I mean, yeah well that, it uh, actually it would be easier to be a black comedian in one sense because it's just as easy in a locker room to make fun of every race but yeah. if you're a white comedian you can't make the obvious jokes about black people you still can behind the scenes if it's just you matt rife and a black buddy hanging out but you can't go on stage and say oh yeah you know they say white people you know they thank the cashier a lot you know you know what black people don't do and thank anybody they just rob <laughs> the cashier the <laughs> they just rob the cash register jokes. they take it <laughs> yeah they just <laughs> They don't do. People don't check out of hotels. They just leave. Like there are comedy routines about that that are hilarious with like urban black and white guys like Colin Quinn and Patrice when he was on Quinn's show right. just roasting each other. Like you guys do this. Patrice O'Neill once went at that exact guy. He like dug up like the white crime rates in New York in like the 70s and was like, how about this Irishman? And everyone's just talking shit. Like you yeah. can do that now only in the minority on white direction. Oh, that'll probably change in a couple of years. Well, this has been really fun and we're at the end, but I do want to leave space if Lou would like to make a joke about a black person. I will <laughs> allow him to to make fun of black people if he wanted to. Well, well I have a, one of one of the worst one of the worst times that I ever bombed on stage. This is like years and years ago. Sure. Uh, you it was bomb on stage today, of course. Right. No, not not today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, not like I just did like three minutes ago. But um uh I it was a uh, it was an all black room, right? And Obama had just, you know, won election. Mm -hmm. And my opening was, I said, I said, I, I said, I, I got to tell you, I feel like Barack Obama right now because I have the opportunity to disappoint so many black people. And <laughs> that's a great joke. Nobody laughed. And then it was the most painful 10, you know, five to 10 minutes or whatever, how long, ever long I was up there. They didn't want me at all up there. So that was some pain. And all in all, you win because he disappointed them. He is Barrington Martin, <laughs> Atlanta radio host. And uh, Barrington, it's been great having you on. Thank you. Always. And uh, Thank you. talk to you soon. You to say, God bless the US of A, land of the free and a home of the brave. God, get all of the praise. I got a country to save because I'm Patriot J and I'm saving a day.